audience. Uh, we're very happy to have Pedro talk on behalf of Jinlong Solis. Pedro, the floor is yours. Hello, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. And of course, thank you, Taiyang News, for, for inviting us to participate in, in this interesting conference. Um, let me share the screen with the presentation. Yep. So, okay, I hope everybody can, can see the presentation. Well, and of course, hello, hello everybody. So I think it's interesting that also uh, inverter manufacturers are, are speaking here because we go together with, with the modules. We are an essential, an essential component to, to use the sort of modules we, we are talking about. I promise I will keep it short, but allow me to briefly introduce uh, Solis. As some might know us as Jinlong Technologies. Jinlong Technologies was founded in 2005, and we have already celebrated our 15th birthday. We are a public listed company since 2019, and I think we were the first string inverter manufacturer to, to do so. Solis is the brand name for our inverters, and that is the name with which we are known worldwide. Based on the latest um, IHS market data, we are the fourth largest inverter manufacturer globally. Okay, but the reason why we are here today is to talk about the evolution of the power rating of the modules. This industry is fast and in the last few years, we have seen an incredible increase in, in power output from, from modules. Manufacturers have increased not only the efficiency, but also the size of the cells in our constant race to reduce cost. And with increment in cell size, of course, we are also seeing larger and larger module sizes. But it's not only the size, the, the, the module area that is growing, the modules electrical parameters are also changing. And we now must handle much higher currents than those we have been handling before. And that is here the interesting challenge. Please let me point out that this is um, a market problem. All manufacturers have more or less similar electrical parameters in their inverters. Today is not the time to discuss the difference between inverters, but to point out that we all must adapt to these new demands from the solar panels. And why is this a challenge? Because if we do not adapt to these high currents, we, all the gains get lost. All the power gains from the solar modules that they have achieved, um, inverters must cut off the peak current they can resist if that one is reached. So we would be at square one. So there's no option. Um, as Darwin already said in 1800, we must adapt. This is why we are in constant conversations with the main PV module manufacturers. And that is why our inverters are constantly evolving and improving. That is why we are already in our fifth generation of inverters and the sixth is around the corner. This is the beauty of the solar industry. It's still at the beginning and constantly evolving. You, you can't stay still. All our inverters are already adapted and prepared for the new high power modules. Of course, uh, with different considerations depending on the application. For example, we do not see too much advantage to install two and a half square meter modules on rooftops for residential use. Well, I personally do not want to imagine the installers having to move around such large modules on top of a roof when a sudden wind gust might blow them away holding two and a half meter sails. And again, this is the beauty of, of solar. There is no one solution that fits it all. Each project might require a different solution. But inverters not only adapt to the new electrical demands of high power modules, we are also looking for ways of reducing the total cost of an installation. The same way modules push down the capex, we at Solis also present ways of reducing those costs. For example, in large utility scale projects. Until now, it might not have been common practice to use string inverters in large plants. Everybody thinks about central inverters when talking about utility scale projects but there are enormous cost advantages when designing a plant for, with, for example, our 255 kilowatt string inverter. Let me use this typical three megawatt configuration as an example. You can, of course, then scale this to whatever plant size you have. 
the design that the design that has been mostly used all this time is where you collect your string into a combiner box and then take the AC power from those to the central inverter. So what happens if we change that? We take away the central inverter and we change the combiner boxes for the string inverters. We have already reduced all the cost of the combiner boxes. But not only that, instead of moving the AC power, we are already at DC power. So the cabling has a less cost than for AC cable. And you can even use um, aluminum cable if you want. You just need um, a, a switch gear box where you, where you connect everything together. And the nice thing is that you can use now communications via PLC, <clears throat> excuse me. So you have power line communication to transmit the data. Before you really did not have um, intelligent information from your, from your strings. You had to in, install different components to, to, to make monitoring of, of strings. Now you can do this. So everybody asks what happens to the inverter skit. Now you, you don't need it anymore. So another cost reduction. So you can see that just by changing the, the way you design a plant, you have much less uh, cost in, 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 in the CAPEX and the complete CAPEX. As you have all the communications already in with the PLC in the data, you of course um, have all the monitoring, stream monitoring, IV scanning, etc. That you can that you can use in in this. Oh, um, I'm not sure if I could show this slide. Um, I think the the boss is going to introduce our new 350 kilowatt string inverter um, at Snack, but well, just. Do as if you have not seen it when, when he does. Don't, don't say you have seen already a 350 kilowatt string inverter which we will bring out to the, to the sites. And as I've been a little bit too fast, I think, in the presentation, because I want to leave some time for, for questions, I have brought some slides to continue bragging a little bit about the company, because it's not only the modules that are growing very fast in the industry, also we are growing. We have now, we are building a new factory. It's a 20 gigawatt a year factory in, in China. And we are constantly bringing out new products like our new Flexi One storage solution. This is a, a cabinet that has already an inverter inside and it's prepared to receive batteries from almost whichever manufacturer you, you have. We have a, a large list of, of compatible batteries that you can use here. But I think maybe it's better if we leave more time for, for questions. So if Michael, if you if you want to take over, I'm 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 happy to answer those questions. Cool. Yeah, I think um, it would be great. First of all, I think you if you can elaborate a little bit on um, on the new products, even if it was accidentally shown. Um, <laughs> so, um, can can you? Because I think it's it's long not lost so long ago that you pushed the two hundred fifty kilowatt uh, inverter actually, and now you're coming up with the three fifty. So, can you just give us a little bit of background behind that? Um, so, what, how was the response of the market to the two fifty kilowatt inverter, and so? Why do you see the need now to go, go, go louder and louder? Well, the, the constant push of the market is to reduce cost. I mean, we have seen it from the beginning. When I started in the industry, we were talking about um, almost four euros, the, 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 the watt peak price. And now we are speaking about a few cents. So we are pushing down, down, down. One way of pushing down prices is by economies of scale. And the acceptance we have seen with the with now using string inverters because previously we did not have string inverters that had the capability of the power to to be used in in utility scale projects but now we now we have them so as i tried to explain you can design your plan completely differently and you can reduce cost where you did not maybe think about reducing costs in, in the beginning when or on the, in the past when you had a, a central inverter so now by using string inverters you not only reduce cost, but you can also have a more intelligent plan because you can monitor a lot of things. And in this push of reducing cost, we are going to larger and larger string inverters for, for those utility scale projects. So that's the reason why there is a 350 coming around the corner. So, so what's, what's the feedback of the, of, the, of the market actually now? So of course, we, we also have central inverters. And so, I don't know, in the past, it was always, of course, that I know you 
both of me um, are, are very familiar with the German market. Of course, when you had a, 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 a planned maximum of, of 10 megawatts, was, which was the tender maximum in Germany, I think then it was clear that you basically always used uh, string inverters. Uh, but now with all these um, subsidy-free huge power plants popping up, especially in Spain, where you have, I don't know, 500, 600 megawatt systems, uh, uh, being built. So is, um, are, are you seeing also that your solution is, um, is being asked for for the real big power plants? Or wh wh where do you see um, when you look at the market that at the moment um, is, the, is the, the upper upper, uh, upper limit for, for swing inverters, despite its many um, advantages? Yes. So as I said before, the, the, the beauty of this industry is that there is no one solution that fits all. So depending on the project, you will use different solutions. And for example, as you mentioned before, I've been working also with, with trackers before. And if you use bifacial modules and you use trackers, the improvement that a string inverter can bring you by, by having more MPPTs makes it much more efficient for, for those modules with a tracker. So the, the, the following of this maximum po point of power is much better if you use a string inverter. So again, it depends how you planned, uh, what, what's the design of your plant. You, will, you would use string inverters, you would central invert it. It really is, there are different components that you have to calculate. You have to make your numbers on, on with, with different scenarios and, and then choose which is the best one for you. No, no, that's for sure. Also, your question but, is also large, large projects are, are using string inverters. Mostly, as I said, with trackers and string. If you have bifacial trackers, then the logic solution is to use string inverters. Okay, okay. Um, perfect. Um, so, um, I think I don't see any questions from the audience i see also that travis your colleague is there yes. so that means uh, if there are further questions um, please everyone in the audience feel free to write them down in the chat and then uh and uh yeah travis or i think uh, pedro you will be also there um, yes i am to answer okay wonderful then thank you so much Thank okay, you. then let's go 